Hi. Hi. Here we are. This is very exciting. Very, very exciting. Yeah, How's it going? Out pretty there? good. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to uh, trying to figure this whole thing out here. I think I'm doing We're okay. We're good. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. What's it like there in sunny California? Oh, it's a beautiful day. It's sweltering. It's really, it's really hot outside. It's actually really nice. It's really nice out. Is it? It has, it seems like it's been very, very hot lately there. Yeah, it's really, it's really hot. It's super duper hot. But it's um, beautiful. It's, I mean, everyone, it's everyone's rainy smiling. Here. It's rainy here in New York. Oh, there's those New York sirens I miss. Oh, do you hear them? I know. Oh, you know yeah, what's so funny? Nice. Um, what's so funny is that New York's been very, very quiet uh -huh. um, these last few months of quarantine or a couple of months. It seems like much longer than whatever it's been, a little over mm. two months. Right. And today, today, um, as people might know, is our offices are mm. right off of Canal Street, right in the heart of Soho and in Chinatown. And as of today, the noise level just changed. It was super quiet. And today I'm hearing more sirens than ever. I'm hearing more noise than ever. It's really interesting. It's back. It's back. I guess it's, it's back. It's back. Well, we have a lot of really great questions for you. Ooh, good. Yes. Good. Um, some of which I think we covered on the podcast, but we'll, uh -huh. cover, we'll cover them again here. The, um, the link to the podcast is here in the chat if anybody wants to go and take a look after this. Um, if, first... if listening to me right now is not enough me, <laughs> you can go and you can listen to me at your convenience. Well, that's what we like. That's what I like here. What we like here at Story and Rain. We like to do, we like to do the full conversation, the full interview. And then we like to do a little podcast pre-party where we get some more questions from people and talk a little right. more. I don't know. I guess this is great. This is my very first Instagram live. I love so. it. I love it. I love you know. that we're on your first Instagram live. Um, Devin asks, who are you dying to shoot? Oh my God, who am I dying to shoot? I, have, I actually have a list of people I wanna shoot. Um, sadly, a few of them I've had to cross out because they've passed away. Oh boy, um, wait, let's backtrack for a second. Do you have your list in front of you? Yes, but it's being used to uh, do an Instagram live. Oh, wait, hold on. I, might... I, I think you need to read from the list, Randall. I mean, it's so ridiculous. The list is so ridiculous because every time I'm... Keep, I'd, like to, I'd actually like to know a little bit more about the list in terms of like... Hold on. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it. It's called... It's got the very clever title of People I Want to Shoot. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. People... Oh, I love it. I want... Oh, yeah, here it is. I mean, it's ridiculous. It goes so on. It's... Oh, it's... I have to cross off Peter Beard. Mm. Oh, we have a question about Peter Beard. Oh, okay. Randall, we have I mean, it's everybody. It's it's literally everybody from like Dan Rather and Gay Talese to uh, New York Times editor Dean Bouquet, uh, Jeff Bezos, Nancy Pelosi, Parkland students, Malcolm Gladwell, uh, you know, uh, James Elroy, the author. I mean, it's everybody. What, Dave Gahan. What an interesting you know. list. And I think when people, um, people might think that your list contains a lot of people sort of in the movie and television world. No, the it opposite. It's, it's much more people like, uh, you know, um, uh, Washington Post uh, editor Marty Baron, uh, you know, Douglas Copeland author, you know, Don Henley, um, you know, so other people like Slash, you know, Brian Setzer, just like sort of yeah. You know, it's literally everybody. Chuck Close, Jeff Koons, Artists Billie Jean well. King, Dustin Hoffman. I'd love to shoot Dustin Hoffman. I mean, it's literally, I'll just be reading something and I'll be like, ah, oh, well, I want to shoot that person. Oh, but that literally, I guess the top of the list would be um, President Obama. Really? Yeah, he would be at the top of my list. And then, and then Brad Pitt right under it. Oh, you would take a great photo of, of both of them. But... Yeah, but Obama would be... Yes. Right yes. Uh, so, so is that how that works? You basically, you come across something, you're reading something and then yeah. you, it's a, it's a note, it's notes in your phone. I take yeah. it. It's, it's a note in my phone. I mean, everybody from, 
you know, Cory Booker, Jake Tapper, Willie Mays. Wow, I mean, Jake you know, Tapper, really inf- that's, we're getting, we're drilling down here. With oh, I know. You know, the punk band X. Why Jake Tapper from CNN? Because I, I, I love what he's doing. I think he's doing great work. You know, I'd love to be a newscaster. I'd love that. You, I, you know what, actually, as, as I was reading through some of these questions, I was wondering if, would you, uh, would you ever act again? Would you ever... I mean, um, look, the last thing Hollywood is doing is wanting me to act again. There is certainly no drumbeat across uh, show business trying to get me to act again. But look, if someone offered me something, would I do it? Probably, but no one's offering me anything. <laughs> um, you do have a great newscaster voice. Well, I would love to tell you what's coming up at uh, 11. What I guess... Um, <laughs> I guess nowadays it it could come up at three or four or something. That's right. No such su- no such thing as you schedule. Know. But yeah, I mean that's my I love that you know no that would be. Schedule. You know, I always say like if I could do it over again, I would I would want to get into politics. But you know. Yeah, you're 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 super into politics. You and I yeah. have not talked politics as of yet, but I right. I know. Yeah, it, it but it takes. I don't want to go to law school and be a lawyer and all that stuff and but you've done a lot of work in washington correct like i've 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 had the uh, i've been able to shoot some people sometimes and that that's great you know the few times i've got to shoot like political people it's very exciting because it's so out of my world you know i it's not actresses or musicians or models it's just such a whole different world that i'm so not connected to that the times that i have gotten access to it been able to shoot someone it's it's really exciting for me so i'd love to be able to do more of that what are they like on camera as a rule are they uh comfortable enough because of all the public appearances yeah yeah you know you know they say politics is show business for ugly people you know (laughs) so i mean they're they're on camera as much as you know anyone um yeah so I mean, they, they the ones I've worked with, they pretty much have their thing they do in front of the camera. And the hard part is getting them not to give that political photo op smile to try right. to get some sort of spontaneity, some sort of right. thing. Right. You know? oh, that that makes a lot of sense. Dan asks, what do you look for in a creative team um, and on set? Well. <laughs> I look for, on set, I look for people who are, who realize that the, the whole is more important than the image, individual parts. That's you know, people answer. realize that their part of this, just as my part of this, is not the only part of it. That we all have to work together. And we're all, our shoot ends up only as good as our weakest part. Like, we talked a little bit about on the podcast, but if we have a shoot and everything is incredible, but the makeup artist isn't, our shoot isn't as good as everyone else's work. It's, you know, right. so so you want, you know, and sometimes people on set, stylists and stuff can get a little, take it really personally when you don't agree with their choices. And that irks me a lot. Like when someone, like if they bring out something and you're like, I don't like that, let's change it and they take it as a personal insult as opposed to you know we all have to be on the same page so i yeah. like i like people who have a strong vision but also realize we're only yeah we're, and I think, we're all parts of one pie there's yeah. not a bunch of individual pies this is this is one cake not a cupcake it's not a cupcake i think that's also like the the mark of a great artist is knowing that art in this way comes together because of teamwork and so Mm -hmm. if you can't check your um i don't know your any if you can't check preconceived notions or like wants or or personal what's the word i'm looking for you know it's a it's a it's a funny thing you know when you start you know i had this moment years ago i was shooting a very very famous uh r&b singer who shall remain nameless oh and uh i have nothing you know but like it was, a, it was a big moment for me as a photographer. I remember it specifically because we got to set and she was late and then she went in hair and makeup and she took forever. And uh, finally, came, finally came out. 
I mean, and we're talking hours. It had been hours, like four hours, you know, and right. she finally came out and her hair was terrible. I hated it. Can you explain what terrible means or meant in that particular moment? It just looked, it looked, it looked like you were, it looked great if you were going to like a red carpet thing. It was very like done up. It was, yeah, they spent too much time on it. They probably overthought yeah, it. Yeah, it. it looked very done up and very like it. she was walking the red carpet, not what you'd want from a photo, you know? And I had this moment where I was like, fuck, you know, we've been waiting so long to shoot. <sighs> right. But it was a big moment for you because it was the first time I remember standing up and saying, you know what? At the end of the day, it's my picture and I don't like this. Yeah. And instead of going, oh, they know better, they're hair people, they, and just shoot it, I was, right. like, I was like, I don't like it, guys. Yeah. And knowing that it was going to be another hour, it's but I remember it was a big moment where I finally had to say, you know what, at the end of the day, it's my name on the picture, even though we are all in this together, if there's something I don't like, I have to stand up and say. Yeah. And she went, and she was fine with it. And, um, and I, you know, they, they gave me a little pushback and then I had a magic word that I said and they scrambled and changed it. What was the magic word? I said, she looks old. That's, that's often the magic <laughs> word. <laughs> Randall, that is so, that's so funny. That is the, ma that, that can yeah. office often be the magic word. Yeah, what I said, it? she looks that's old. Actually, for anyone who's listening, that's like, that's a really good tip yeah. from, a, from you as a photographer is like, if you're looking, if something's you not want... working out, if you want someone to change something, just say they look old. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Felix asks, what's the longest shoot you've ever done and why? Oh, my. I mean, just there's probably been many. Can you recall one that just ran really long? And, and do you remember why? That I mean, was? there was one. I did this shoot on the desert with Charlize. That was very long. It was like, you know, six in the morning pick up to drive to up. And then it was made longer because I was... I was like, you know, I was going to be part of the team and I wasn't as soon as we were wrapped going to get in my car and drive home. Yeah. You know, I was like, uh, you know, I'll stay until I'll be the very last person to leave set, you know, after the stylist has packed up everything. And I was like, all right, time to, and I got in my car and I left my lights on. So my car didn't start. So um, oh boy. that was the longest day because I had to then wait about an hour and a half after that for like AAA to find me in the middle of the desert. Oh boy. Um, but I do remember the shortest. Yeah, the shortest. What? Shoot. Do you remember what, what Shortest was the shoot I ever had, and I, I had my assistant clock it, is we, I did a shoot with the great legendary Vanessa Redgrave. Mm. And uh, I, I, four minutes on, to, for her being on paper to go was that because of her schedule or because you nailed it? No. Actually? We had to do something very simple. It was just one little thing, one little close-up. She wasn't changing clothes. She wasn't changing hair and makeup. It was just, and we did, it was four minutes. And the picture's beautiful. The picture's wow. very beautiful. But yeah, that, I, I remember the shorter ones more than the long ones. You do. That's funny. That's interesting. Yeah. Ellen asks, have you ever created photos that you're in love with featuring someone you didn't care to shoot at first. Yeah, well, well, I, I did, I, I had a situation with uh, John Hamm, who, when I, I, when I was first shooting him, I think Mad Men had just started, and um, I hadn't watched the show yet, but I knew people were talking about him. I knew there was a big buzz about Don Draper and everything. Yeah. So I remember I, uh, he arrived on set and I was like, this is the guy? Huh. <laughs> All right. And he went and did hair and makeup and stuff like that. And then when he came out, I was like, and I started shooting. And as soon as I looked at him through the camera, then I was like, oh, I get it. Wow, oh, that's interesting. Oh, so yeah. he walked in very unassuming. He walked in just like a normal guy. But as soon as I put the camera up and he was in hair and makeup and he gave me the look, I was like, ah. Oh. I get it. I get it. And then right. I went well, home that, and started makes, watching Mad Men. That makes me want to skip to a question that I was going to ask you further along. But on, on, along these lines, Kim asks, can you sense star quality in someone when you're shooting them? And have you ever seen that in someone who's starting out? 
um, where you go, you just you're behind the camera and you go, that person's going to be a huge star. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think I've I've had that with a few people where you know you just knew that they had something interesting. Um, Can you recall? But I also don't think I think everybody saw it. It's not like I had some special magical power that I, you know, I was like, oh my god, I, I'm the only person who's noticed this. You know, like I remember, um, like you know, you know this, like I'm trying to think, like. Like Cami Marone, you know. Uh, yes, actress. I've been. I've, I've talked to her. To I've. Been yeah, you know, like I shot person. her when she was sixteen, and you immediately knew you're like, oh, this girl's, you know. Um, and the same thing with Emily Ratajkowski. I shot her a few times for like little nothing jobs before she. But she walked in, and you're like, oh yeah, she's she's got that. Yeah, thing. I mean, you I know, remember, and I actually say this in the in, in the intro to the podcast, but I remember. And you and I have talked about it before too. One of the one of the shoots that you had done many years ago when I first met you was mm -hmm. um, one of Lily Aldridge's first shoots. And you oh yeah, knew, yeah, Lily knew, was one. You knew Lily and you knew her family. And Lily had to be about sixteen. Yeah, and I first shot Lily. Uh, yeah, that, I forgot we worked it on had that. To, yeah, yeah. It had to be. Yeah. It could have been her first shoot, to be honest. It was up there. I remember I sh first shot her when she was 15. She was with Wilhelmina on, like, the juniors board. But she had this fucking face. And I yes. just, I remember talking to the agent. And I was like, I really want to shoot this girl. I think this girl is going to be something amazing. And I'll never forget, the agent slagged her off. And she was like, not with. And then she sort of listed things. And well, I, was, I think and she, you know, I think, you know, she was, she was really young. Very um, young. And I remember her, her you know, she... I mean, I hate to go down this road of having this conversation, but she wasn't necessarily like working on her body at the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and why would she? And, you know. Um, yeah, she was 15. She was 15. Yeah. And I, but I remember that is a moment where yeah. I remember being like, this girl's going to be a huge star. Yeah. Lily you was know? definitely, I'm, the shoot we did with her, at, she was 16. And I remember um, it was the first sort of like grown up shoot she'd ever done. Yeah. You know, like she'd only done like sort of active junior Z kind of things. And um, it was the first sort of, and I remember, I just, I still think she's the bee's knees. And it's just, it's. She really is. In, you know, I would love, to, I would love to shoot her again. I haven't shot her since yeah, I was like 18. I run into her every once in a while, Kings of Leon concerts and stuff like that. But like, you know, I, I haven't shot her in many years. Yeah, we just went, we just, we did. We did a, an article with her, um, mm -hmm. and we she just launched a fragrance collection, right. which is actually really beautiful. She's got great taste. She's Jory, a, I mean, she comes from a very artistic, very yes. incredible family. Yes, like her dad, her you know, it. She's you know, Ruby, her sister is fantastic. She comes from a very beautiful, very artistic family. Yes, Jory asks what, I and mean, you sort of touched on this, but what makes a shoot successful to you? Um, you know, it, it, what makes it, I think like, like, I think we talked about the podcast, like photo shoots have, I think like six elements. You it's know, you funny. Have, that's the clip, <laughs> the clip that, uh, we're, we're launching that goes along with the podcast is that very clip. Why don't you huh. say it? Well, I think elements. like with a shoot, um, there's like six elements. I think I said six, yes, you know, six. that goes in. There's like your subject, your photographer your location, your hair, your makeup, and your styling. You have these six things. You're lucky if three of them are great or four of them and in a shoot. And sometimes when you can get all six great, your shoot really is one of those very memorable things. And yes. for me, it doesn't happen often where all of those are incredible. Usually you have like your subject's great, but you don't have a lot of time and you're in some shitty hotel and you've got to do a cover and a bunch of, you know, you're going to do the best you can and you've got maybe four out of your six are great, but your yeah. location's shitty, you know, right. like, so you have all these elements and if you can get as many of those great as you can, that's when your shoot really elevates. Right. And a lot of times, when you're in the editorial world, those elements, a lot of times, sadly, depend on money. And if you're yes. going to put it, if you're going to go out of pocket, very good point to make 
your location better, or you're going to go out of pocket to have more gear. You know, a lot of times it ends up like, do I have the money to make this shoot fantastic? Or am I going to settle for, it's got some pretty good stuff. Right. You know? Yeah. That's very true of, of shoots. Hannah, toughest shoot you've ever done. Oh, man. I mean, can you give us a little sneak peek of honesty here? I mean, you know, you always shoot people you don't get along with, but that's when being a craftsman comes in and you yes. still deliver. I mean, I did have a shoot when I was very young. I, I, I had a shoot with Anna Nicole Smith. Oh, and, wow. And uh, we, we, you know, we spent two hours in hair and makeup. And it was when she'd sort of come back and she was thin and she was doing like, yes. you know, and, and we got like two and a half hours of hair and makeup. And then she just left. She just walked out. What? And I got the word that I was like, yeah, she left. She's gone. We're like, wait. She's wow. like, yeah, she did. She did hair and makeup. Did an interview with like Entertainment Tonight about wow. the shoot, and then just wow. left. Wow. So. And so, um, what, were, what was what was the shoot? What were the pictures supposed to be for? We, it was it was a uh, like a like a clothing line that she was starting or something. Right, and she just was like, I don't care about this. She said she had drank too much NyQuil and wasn't feeling well. Oh, so she just went, she's went for it with the honesty. On uh, yeah, because at one point her, her uh, that odd manager boyfriend, Howard, came up to me. He's like, you got to talk to Anna. She's not feeling well. So I ran upstairs and I was like, what's going on? She's like, oh, man, I just took too much NyQuil. I was like, <laughs> oh, come on, you'll be okay. It's going to be beautiful. Next time, like, DayQuil, oh, DayQuil. Oh. And she's like, DayQuil? That's a shame, but actually, I want to ask you that. How how often does that happen to you as a photographer where you're being asked by somebody other than talent, or obviously it wouldn't be talent, but to come in and, and sort of get... get it happened, not ready. often, not, not often. It happened once with a rock star who was being a little difficult with the client. He was great with me. He was, he was great with me, gave me some great stuff, but with the client, he was being difficult. Like they wanted him to do a lot of things. You know, not a lot of things, they paid him a lot of money. And, and they just... wanted him to do some things and he just didn't want to do them. And they came up to me and they were like, can you go talk to him? Can you go talk to him? And I was like, that is not my place, guys. I'm sorry. I got to keep my relationship with him in a good place. Um, Sorry, there's just a coyote walking to my backyard. Oh, that's all. Just a coyote. <laughs> Sorry. We have um, sirens and you have coyotes. Yeah, welcome. And uh, so, yeah, they were like, um, they were like, can you go talk to him? And I was like, that is, that is a bad idea for me to all of a sudden be seen as that side of things. I need to keep my relationship with yeah, him. Yeah, once we take it to that place, we may never I, you, you don't want me to be the enemy. You want me to be on his side. That's right. Well, that's a good and I will say, I will say, he was very wrong. He was very wrong in his behavior towards the client. Wow. But that's also a very good tip but, for any photographer no. out there. It's like, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to straddle that side of the fence. You don't want to get into that. Yeah, you know, you got to know, you got to know your place, know your place and know that your relationship with the talent is important, you know, it's mm -hmm. very important. And your relationship with the client is important, but it's different. You can go back and you can tell, you know, you have to keep that relationship with the client, with the, with the talent. Um, paramount. Paramount. And you can deal with the client and realize and fix that or try to be on their side also. But, you know, it was just not my place to get in the middle of, hey, you need to come and do this EPK. <laughs> yeah. You know. How, uh, Anne asks, how long did it take for you to put your book together? Oi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you know, look, I was, I was very slow at the beginning. So in the beginning, it took me, I mean, it was like two years from beginning to end. But like the first year, I was very slow. I didn't have, I was just sort of meandering about it. And then all of a sudden, I got wind that someone else was doing a very similar book. Oh, and yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, we gotta, yeah, we gotta be first. We gotta be first. Way to push and, the timeline um, forward. Yeah. I yeah, that ended up, I don't think, happening. But um, 
but it was, it was a long process of just, um, you know, even when your book is done, it still takes, I think, three months to get a printed copy of it. So even when you're done, you've still got, you know, a while to wait. It's you know? hard to take your life's work and sort of just... It was interesting. It was an interesting sort of journey to, to dig through um, all these old snapshots of your life. You know, it was a, it was a very... You know, it was really interesting to, because I wanted to go through everything, see if there was little gems I'd forgotten or see if there was pictures that I didn't know existed. And there was a couple that I was like, oh, I didn't know I had that. And that made it in the book. But it was just, it was a very interesting sort of melancholy journey to, yeah. to look through everything and to see people that were at one point such a big part of your life that aren't anymore. And you'd see that because they'd be in so many pictures. You'd be yeah. like, oh my God, you'd be with them. And then you're like, I haven't talked to that person in years. Right, and you're sort of like, that's how I was spending my time back then. Yeah, it's just interesting. You know, there's a lot of people who, who didn't make it. You know, a lot of, we lost a lot of people to drugs and, um, and famous people and non-famous people, just friends. You're like, oh, yeah, that person. You sort of forget them. And then you see a picture of them and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot we, that person hasn't been around for a decade. And you were saying there were some people that you'd like to shoot that aren't around anymore, Randall. But, sorry. It's okay. Sorry, you were saying sorry. that there are some people that we've lost that you would have liked to have shot that are not around anymore. Who are those Yeah, people? yeah. Do you yeah. remember who some of those people were? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I was, I was friends a bit with Scott Weiland, but I never actually shot Scott. Yeah. And I'm bummed I never got the opportunity to. That's right. Hi, Roos. <laughs> And um, um, yeah, there was a few that like, um, yeah, you know, Scott, I really, I'm such a huge fan of Scott Weiland and I would have loved to have shot him, but it never happened. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. he's, the one that, he's the one that comes to mind more than anybody. Camilla is asking, what's your favorite photo in the book and why? Do you have a favorite? Can you do you, favorite? Do you, does Camilla have the book? I guess she can't answer now, can she? No. I mean, my favorite snapshot, um, there's a snapshot of Scott Weiland and his daughter, which um, just hanging out at the beach. Um, his daughter was very young and um, is a really beautiful, poignant little moment. Um, it's a snapshot, so I don't really consider it like a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. um, that I find really poignant and sweet in the side of Scott that people don't see. Mm -hmm. um, that photo is particularly resonant with me. Um, as far as the portrait stuff, um, I mean, I don't know. I love like I don't know. I love, like, there's a Mark Wahlberg picture I really love. Yeah, that's a good one. I know um, that one. But, you know, I love the Nick Jonas picture I really like. I don't know. I like him for various reasons. Like, I, mm -hmm. I like the lighting in that Mark Wahlberg picture. My team did a really great job that day. Um, I like the Nick Jonas picture. Just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, um, Audrey is asking, what excites you about photography? Well, question. what excites me about photography is, is um, photography for me, for me is, is, has always been about connection and about connecting with people and getting to know people. And so what excites me is being able to see people that I wouldn't normally get to spend time with and to, and to get a little piece of their world, you know, um, and I've been fortunate enough to really, um, so that's what excites me when I get to shoot somebody who's so out of my orbit, like, you know, I shot mm -hmm. recently, um, maybe a couple of years ago, I shot Andrew McCabe, who's, you know, the former FBI director and, and um, you know, someone like that is just such a different world for me and to be able to it's spend a way time to with connect. them. Yeah, yeah, you know, like this, I always say to people, it's like, the camera is such, it's, it's a magical key that opens so many doors that would never be open to somebody like me. 
That's and, interesting. And, and you have this little box that you know how to work and you can do anything. You know, I've, 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 I've spent time with my, my idols because of, I work this box. I've sat on the side of concerts for my favorite rock stars because I have this little box. Um, I've, I've had access to things and people and moments and events purely because I have this key and it has value. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I love about photography is that it, it just, it, there's, there has, there's no door it doesn't open. It's so interesting. Jill asks, what is the craziest thing that's ever happened on set? Oy. I, I mean, don't know. Have you shot with animal? <laughs> I, I, the cra I mean, I wish I had these in advance. Well, I the Anna Nicole Smith is pretty. What? what? The Anna Nicole Smith just sort of. Oh, I mean, that's nothing. I mean, I'm sure I got more okay. than that. Um, what what's else? the craziest thing ever happened? Yeah. I mean. Give us I'm, a good one. Give us a good one. I mean, I try, hold on. I mean, I wish I had like. Oh, man. You wish you could access all everything in your mind right now? Yeah, I mean, I know there's, I know as soon as we, we hang up, I'm gonna be like, oh, why didn't I remember this, you know, um, craziest thing? I don't know, man. I don't know. I should know that. That's, that's a good question. All right, well, sit, sit on that one for a second and let's- Sorry. No, let's think about it for a sec and maybe we'll come back to that. Liz asks, how, this is a good one, I think, for people starting out as photographers. How many test shoots did you have to do before you didn't have to do any anymore? Well, do think? I still, do, do, still do them. I still do, do tests. I love doing tests, you know. Um, so I've never stopped. I, you know, like I shot pictures before I got paid for it. Why would I only do it if I get paid for it? Like I love shooting pictures. Right. I, I will shoot pictures whether I'm paid for it or not. That's the beauty of the job. Yeah, that you do I mean, I, I, I mean, I, you, when I first started out, of course, you're doing tests because you need experience. And my tests were fucking terrible. Well, there's tests. I mean, they were terrible. Tests. Oh, mine were terrible. But I think mm -hmm. a lot of people can look back and, and say that. I mean, I've done. Of as course. A I mean, as a stylist, I was doing some. Oh, stylists are the worst. It's the yeah, worst. Yeah, it's the worst. It's bad. It can be pretty bad. Like, yeah. a lot of people, Randall, you'll appreciate this. Like, a lot of people wanted to do tests. A lot of, like, up and coming photographer, up and coming. A lot of any photographers um, wanted to do tests with me because I was the uh, the fashion assistant at sure. interview. Of course. So like I had that was just always coming my way. Like let's right. do a test. I know you have clothes. Like I know you you work yeah. next. You work in the office next right. to the photo department. So yeah, you can be you can be my way in. Yeah yeah yeah. Let's yeah. Do you never that. you never got me an interview. I don't think we knew each other then. No, I don't think so. No, um, yeah, I love doing tests. You know, I, I do tests all the time. I don't think you ever stop. I mean, like if there's people I want to shoot, I don't need to wait for a job to shoot them. Like there's an actor right. I grew up loving and I reached out to his people and I said, I want to shoot him. I mean, is that a Who test? Who is this? I'm sorry. Who is it? Just an actor I grew up loving, like, you uh -huh. know, many years ago. And, right. and I reached out to his team and said, I'd love to shoot this guy. Cause I want, cause like going back, I wanted to spend a day with him. I wanted That's to right. sort of pick his brain about shit. Cause I was a big fan. And, and um, I mean, is that a test? Technically it is, but I mean, yeah, I mean it was good. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll always. You can really go down the road of like, what makes a test shoot a test shoot, right? Like, yeah. I mean, look, if, if you only shoot when someone's paying you to shoot, you're going to dry up. You're going to get, sort of bitter because a lot of times when people pay you to shoot most of the stuff isn't exciting isn't stuff you want to shoot you're doing it because you have bills to pay you know so if you're only doing stuff when people pay you you you're might not have this, you might not have that much fun yeah we're getting you know? a lot of um not so much questions but a lot of people are pointing to your a uh, shooting of, of jeremy renner yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I've got a lot of Jeremy Renner fans. What do you have to say about it? Too. A lot of people, a lot of comments about Jeremy Renner. Oh, really? You know, I love yeah. Jeremy. Jeremy's a, I mean, I've known Jeremy for a billion years, you know. Um, I remember when I first met him well over 10 plus years ago, he'd done a small part in a, a movie that a friend of mine had starred in. She said, 
Oh, there's a guy on set you're going to love. Uh, I love this guy. He reminds me so much of you. You guys are going to, like, meet and... Um, <laughs> Gel and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was him, and, and it's true. And uh, we're just very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, not bank account ways, but um, <laughs> a lot of other ways. Yeah. Monica. Yeah, what did, what did, hold on, we have a question right here. What did, what did Pam write? Pam, like, I think Pam, Pam is asking a question about if you're with family, do you need permission to take a picture? I don't understand what, I know that there's sort of an issue. I don't know. No one in my family ever wants their picture taken. So that never is an issue. No, but if you're, if you're with family, what does that mean? Does that mean? Know. Sorry, Pam. Uh, I don't know. Pam, Pam will, will come back to that if you clarify your question. <laughs> Uh -huh. Monica asks, which celebrity, male or female, is particularly stunning in person? Male or female? I mean, wow. You know, like when I used to shoot Charlize a lot, she was, she's a pretty remarkable physical thing. You know, she's, she's pretty, you know, yeah, she's pretty stunning. But like, I remember... Um, Oh, God damn it. I know there's more. But, you know, like, I remember um, Jessica Biel was incredibly beautiful on set. You know, um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. No, that's, um, that's any of the guys that you're like, that I'd love to get your perspective on the, the men. On the men. You're a man, you have good taste. And yeah, I mean, I shoot, I shoot, I, sh I, I, I didn't, you know, it's funny, I go through phases where I used to shoot only women, then I shot only men. For some reason, now I'm shooting a lot of athletes, which is a whole different thing. But, um, you know, when I shot Jonathan Reese Myers, he was like crazy beautiful, like in this weird alien yes. beauty, you know, right around match point, where you're like, I, and such a talented guy. Um, you know, uh, Chris Cornell was like that. Chris mm -hmm. Cornell had that. You know, Chris Cornell was, um, he had that just a confidence and a, and a mm -hmm. he was such a rock star that mm -hmm. it was nice. Um, Randy's asking, what are your thoughts on hair and makeup? I'm assuming like, what is your- I, I always need makeup. <laughs> um, what? What is your, I think what, what the question is more like sort of what is your taste I like it simple. I like it really simple. Um, I mean, the, I'm, I let makeup artists do what they want. Usually the only thing I, you'll never see like a dark lip. <laughs> I hate a dark lip. We talked about that. Oh, talked yeah. In our shoot with uh, uh, Elizabeth, I was like, yeah. oh, oh I hate a dark lip. Yeah. Um, I hate it in life. I hate it in photos. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, I, I, I think having a great hair person is more important than having a a great makeup person on a shoot. Why, if I had to that, choose, if I had to choose. That's interesting because I actually, I just finished a podcast with the um, hairstylist, Danielle Priano. Oh, I love her. Yeah. And yeah. why Why would you say that hair, and we talked a lot about. Why? I'll one, tell you. One of because... the questions that I asked, asked of her was, you know, oftentimes a woman who's not necessarily stunning, if she has beautiful, beautifully colored hair, thick mm -hmm. hair, like nice hair, she can right. often look a lot, you know, it kind of ele can elevate her look. And I was saying to Danielle, like, is the opposite true? But what is it about hairstylists on set that you feel, or the hair on set that's more important than you think? Well, I think it's more important because you can retouch makeup. Yeah, you can't right. retouch bad hair. Right, right. Good, good. That's the, that's the answer. <laughs> you know, that's right. And then we have a we have a question from Charlie about fashion on set. Mm. What kind of fashion do you like on set, or does that not really matter? Um, no, it definitely matters. I, I I like I like simple things. Like I don't want things to be too stamped yeah. with the era they're in. You know. Yes. Like I want them to feel pretty timeless, and I also don't want something to feel like, you know, sometimes stylists will put people in outfits that are so costumey costumey and so over the top and so like it's too much whereas I, I i like people to almost feel that they could live in this they could also be like yes it's it's fashion but they could also just say okay i'm gonna wear this tonight i have dinner 
and it wouldn't yeah. be completely ridiculous. Yeah, my favorite fashion stuff that the fashion still feels very livable and very um, timeless. You said timeless. It. Yeah. 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 It can be a gown. It can be a suit, yeah. but it's timeless. I mean, um, you look at some of the greatest Peter Lindbergh pictures and it feels like they're in, you know, some black slacks and a coat and their hair's pulled back. And that, yeah. or, you know, and that could be taken in 93 or, you know, last month. That's, right. that's great. You know, and always stylish and always interesting. And it's how is never, it <laughs> how is it that some of your photos, how, how, how uh, can capture you? someone's soul? Well, yeah, I, I, you know, what's really interesting not to cut you off Randall is that that yeah. is that exactly what I said in the intro to the podcast is that you are somebody that captures the soul of people in the spotlight. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that is true. I do not think a photo can capture someone's soul. I think it can capture what you think is that person's soul. That's right. That's what, yeah, but that's what it's right. only capturing your impression of that person. Right. You know, it's not really, you know, I, I just, I, I don't think it, it can do that. I don't think it has the capabilities. It has the capabilities of, of, illuminating what you already think about that person. And sometimes you can play into that. Like I, I was doing a shoot years ago with Kobe Bryant. And, oh, um, and I remember uh, I wanted to shoot him from a really low angle. I wanted him to feel, cause he's, he had a like reputation. Like ominous or something? Well, I just um, wanted him to, you know, he's got a reputation of being sort of arrogant. You know, he had a reputation as being a pretty arrogant basketball player. And I wanted a sort of low angle that he would look heroic and sort of looking down on me. So you can sort of play into it, but it's really not an essence. It's not capturing his essence. It's capturing what I think of him, you know? Um, no, I think, I think, it, was, I I think it was, I think it was Avedon who said something about like, um, the, the photo is, is, it's all about the photographer. It's not about the subject. Yeah. It's always about the photographer. And, um, I, so the you know, photographer that we, has to be pretty special to create a special photograph. Well, I just think, it, it, yeah, it's, it's about us. It's not, a, it's, it's how we feel about the subject.